A reading from the letter of Paul to the Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, when the fullness of time had come, God sent his son, born of a woman, born under the law, to ransom those under the law so that we might receive adoption. As proof that we are children, God sent the spirit of his son into our hearts, crying out, Abba, Father. So you are no longer a slave, but a child. And if a child, then also an heir through God. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. I'd like to reflect with you at this novena on Mary, who I love to call our hope. They say that hope is the flower of faith, and if this is true, then we can certainly say that Mary's hope grew from her faith. St. Alphonsus, in his great work, The Glories of Mary, reminds us of how strong Mary's hope was. Mary showed how great her confidence was in God when she saw that Joseph, her betrothed, not knowing the cause of her conception, was planning to quietly divorce her. One would think that she would have felt compelled or felt compelled to tell Joseph everything that happened, but she didn't she did not make known to him the grace she had received. She put that responsibility completely in God's hands, confident that God would defend her innocence and her reputation. This hopeful expectation in God was also shown when she and Joseph had to flee with their child into Egypt, when Jesus was lost in Jerusalem, when she asked her son to help, him, help her at the wedding feast in Cana, and then proceeded to tell the servants, do whatever he tells you. Believe it or not, hope has been called the forgotten virtue. People forget that hope goes hand in hand with two other virtues, faith and love. And all three of these virtues go together because you can't have one without the other. But St. Augustine calls hope the greatest of all these three virtues. First, faith tells us that God is, and love tells us that God is good, but hope tells us that God will work his will. So we all need hope to live just as we need oxygen to breathe. And so great is the need that you only have to mention the word hope to see some people straighten up and literally look at your hands to see if by any chance you're holding something that could quench their thirst. We say there's life while there's hope, but it's also true that while there's hope, there's life. I think a common obstacle to growing in hope is our own excessive self-consciousness. We tend to be too sensitive to the chance of failure, to the possibility of criticism, and a host of other petty thoughts. We need the hope. We need the hope of Mary, whose confidence in God was unshaken despite her own difficulties. So I think the key to living happily is to fix our eyes on God, to trust in the power of his love. The cultivation of the virtue of hope really depends on what we think about, what we dream of, and what we wish for. If we think less of ourselves and fix our attention on the things of God, I think we'll be better able to overcome the trials and temptations that come our way. We grow in hope and in holiness by first learning to see God in all things, and then later by learning to see all things in God. 
St. Teresa of Avila advise, advises us well when she says, contemplate God and be at peace. St. Alphonsus says the most certain means of growing in hope and holiness is to visit the Blessed Sacrament, receive Holy Communion, pray frequently and faithfully to Mary, because these are God's gift of hope and immortality. So today, may I suggest that you pray especially to Mary, our Mother of Perpetual Help, that our hope in God may be strengthened. I'm remembering the beautiful words of St. Bernard of Clairvaux when he writes, in dangers and in difficulties, in doubts, look to Mary. Call on Mary to help you. Let her name always be on your lips. Let her love be ever in your heart. If you follow her, you will never go astray. If you pray to her, you will not despair. If she bears you up, you will not fail. If she leads you, you will never grow weary. If she helps you, you will find what you desire. Let us then learn to invoke Mary often as the mother of hope. And if at this moment you're feeling the slightest distress, if you've been feeling tempted to be discouraged, then let me assure you, take hope in these words. Mary, my hope, I trust in you. <laughs>